Hey guys, Trap Chains here. Just wanted to show my support monk as it stands in patch 2.6.1 for Diablo 3, particularly in reference to playing with a wizard as a trash clear clearer. Um, it's changed a bit since I last made a guide on this. So first up, I just want to talk about some gameplay. Importantly, just like you would if you were with a witch doctor anyway, is stay with the wizard in the pack. The wizard can't move nearly as easily as you. So you have illusory boots to move through, through monsters and you also have epiphany if you want to use it. The wizard doesn't have either of those things. The wizard finds it quite difficult to move. So if the wizard is moved or does move, you need to move to the wizard. Um, number one, the wizard needs you. <laughs> okay, so the mantra that you're typically running with the Star Pact Wizard is Mantra of Healing Time of Need. And you're choosing this mantra for the active shield. Now, to keep the active shield, you have to spam it because the suit, that shield drops off as soon as that much damage has been absorbed. So you have to keep spamming the key. So if you're going to play Mantra of Healing Time of Need, spam the button. If you really don't want to spam a mantra, do everybody a favor and run Mantra of Salvation Agility instead. But it is preferable with this that you are spamming Mantra of Healing Time of Need for that shield. Um, because you are spamming a mantra in this build, you can't afford the resource to spam Cyclone Strike. Um, also, the wizards are getting a lot of stuff from area damage. So you run Cyclone Strike Implosion, which because there's no heals associated with it, um, you can just hit it occasionally, you know, every few seconds. You know, you don't need to be spamming your Cyclone Strike in this build. Um, your main resource, you focus on your mantra. Okay. Um, and you have, and you run as a passive Chant of Resonance instead of an attack speed passive to allow you to spam that mantra. Okay. Um, other things gameplay wise, you need to make sure you have enough cooldown, which I generally say early season, I say 65 plus percent sheet cooldown to keep up permanent sanctuary and permanent epiphany soothing mist. So you don't want that sanctuary to drop off for any length of time because otherwise your DPS are at stake. Um, and similar with epiphany soothing mist, they're big heals and big, uh, you know, damage reduction and stuff. So you need to keep them up permanently. Um, which also means to keep them up permanently, replace Inner Sanctuary Temple of Protection. Temple of Protection is what we typically run. It just means that um, if the Barb is a little far from the group to keep his IP up all the time, they, uh, you've still got CC resistance for your DPS from your Sanctuary. But replace the Inner Sanctuary Temple of Protection as soon as it's available. Don't wait until you see the, the Sanctuary disappear, because if you do, there will be that gap for your DPS. Um, other skills you're running, you're running Blinding Flash, Crippling Light, just hit that whenever it's available, uh, whenever it's off cooldown, apart from the Rift Guardian fight, I'll get to that later, but during the main Rift, hit it whenever available, stop at the RG. And then the other thing you're doing during the Rift is moving between pools. So when you're moving to survive, you actually have to focus on a bit of surviving while you're moving as well. Make sure you keep up your Epiphany and occasionally hit mobs with both your Cyclone Strike, which will proc the damage reduction from your shoulders, and your Crippling Wave, which will proc damage reduction from one of your sets of braces um, as you're moving. That said, when you are moving, don't Cyclone Strike in doorways, and try and avoid Cyclone Striking in that narrow passageways as well, because you don't want to block your DPSs. Say they find it hard to move to you, so if you are in some kind of passageway or something where it's a little bit difficult to avoid, um, at least try and stay to one side and that being the opposite side to the wizard. And in general, when you're moving, try where possible to stay relatively close to your wizard um, for more moves, but you also need to get to the setup point first, so the sank's down, so the wizard knows where it's aiming for us, but just try and move out just at the end to set up. I think that's most of what you do in the Rift. It's really about supporting your wizard as much as possible. So moving on to the actual boss fight. So
So in this main meta setup, as it is in 2.6.1, you will have a Necromancer, Pestilence, Necromancer, Corpse Lance, DPS taking down your Rift Guardian. The Pestilence Necromancer is really um, sensitive to crowd control reduction. So when the Pestilence Necromancer is doing their cycle, they are setting up to get maximum damage on their cold cycle. And that's at the end of their Land of the Dead freeze. So they want the boss to stay frozen for the entire length of that 10 seconds. So they want the boss before they start their cycle to have no crowd control resistance built up. So all enemies in this game build up crowd control resistance with each crowd control that's placed on them and then that wears off over time. So your job as a monk, as well as just keeping your necromancer alive becomes the main thing in the Rift Guardian fight, is to make sure you're not affecting the boss with crowd control. So number one, do not use blinding flash on the boss. Don't do it. Unless it's one of the very few bosses that you have to stun to avoid some adds, but that's a separate scenario and I'm not going to go into that level of detail. So just don't use blinding flash for now. And then in the last five to 10 seconds before your rift guarding killer is going to pop their cycles, you need to avoid the third hit of crippling wave tsunami. So the third, quit, third hit of crippling wave tsunami is a freeze hit. So you don't want that to be applied because it's such a small freeze hit. If that is the only CC applied to the boss, um, it will wear off in that five to 10 seconds. So you need your Rift Guardian Killer to actually communicate with you. So communication is good for this, um, to either say stop CC or that they will go next cycle or something. And when they do that, you make sure you do not hit with that third hit of Crippling Wave Tsunami. How do you do that? Well, the easiest way to do it, easiest way I find is just do one hit of Crippling Wave and then one hit of Cyclone Strike. Um, that's relatively easy to control for those last 10 seconds and then all the way through the Necromancer cycle. Um, you want to do that because if you're trying to do the two hits of Crippling Wave before the one hit of Cyclone Strike, you've just got more chances of it stuffing up and getting that accidentally hitting that third hit in there. I guess the other thing importantly to note is while Cyclone Strike will CC mobs in the rest of the rift, it doesn't actually CC the boss. So you're allowed to cycle and strike, which is great. Okay, so I think that's most of the main gameplay relevant things that I can think of right now. So I'm gonna move into game to show the gear and skills that I use. This is my non-season monk. So keep in mind that when I talk about gear, this is gear that I've got over several seasons. First up, I wanted to make some general gearing comments. Um, particularly that you want to make sure you have enough cooldown to keep your Sanctuary and Epiphany up all the time. So what I recommend for this is aiming for at least 65% cooldown reduction. More is better though. So you can see here with my fully geared uh, zero DPS monk, I have 705 percent cooldown reduction which is great but you know early season particularly I'm aiming for at least that 65 percent now when you are doing early season gearing cooldown is more important than health loads this is something that I think everyone needs to remember until you hit that 65 percent point because cooldown actually gives you your healing and your your buffs right cooldown means that sank is available full-time epiphany is available full-time etc health globes are a buff to those healing abilities and a buff to healing abilities. So if you don't have them up, your health globes aren't helping. So do get put cooldown as your number one priority and then health globes as your second priority. So until cooldown, first priority until you hit 65%, then health globes becomes your priority. Um, just to give you a general idea, health globes buff your skills, including Epiphany Soothing Mist, it's an increase of 4% of your health globe bonus um, and your mantra of healing time of need active shield is increased by 15% of your health globe bonus. So that's why health globes are so important. They're buffing the shield that you use for time of need, assuming you're spamming it, which is required. Um, and they're also inc increasing the power of your epiphany soothing mist. Generally, once you've got your 
cool down to acceptable, which as I say is definitely over 65%, but the higher the better. You also then are aiming for your globes as next. Now, early season, I would say like really early season, you're aiming for 150 odd. Later season, you definitely want over 200 odd. And you can see here in non-season, I'm sitting here on this character at 229.7K health globe bonus, which is pretty sweet. Okay. Um, so yeah, you want as much cooldown as possible, as much health globes as possible. And then your next priority stats are your survivability stats because to heal people, you need to survive and not die. So really your focus there is on vitality, resistances, and percent life. And then following that, I would say attack speed is your next priority. And attack speed is all about keeping your resource generation up. The faster you hit, the more resource you get with your crippling wave. And finally, I'm gonna say life per second. And that gives you some additional healing buffs, particularly in this case on Mantra of Healing, the passive life per second, the passive life it provides will be increased by 7% of your life per second. If you are playing a different variation where you are using Inner Sanctuary Safe Haven, Safe Haven is also buffed by your life per second by 7%. Okay, so now let's look at my gear remembering this is non-season so it is a bit of accumulation of gear over the last several seasons because i've played monk a lot okay so you're wearing inners four piece set particularly for that four piece bonus you want to gain the base effect of all four mantras at all times and your party within x yards also receives that bonus so that's great you only get that active of the one you're actually pressing and the rune of the one you've actually got equipped so your chest piece, all about survivability, vitality, resist all life. And importantly, your chest piece is one of the places you can get health globes. And there's no cooldown on this, so you really want that health globe secondary to be high. Really important. I do find, you can see there, my other secondary is golden health pickup. You know, that's actually pretty good as a, like an extra stat. You know, not required for the build, but it's always handy. Okay, your belt. Again, survivability is key here. Dexterity, vitality, resist all, and percent life is great all for survivability. You can, if you like, if you want the life per second, you can have one of these stats replaced for life per second, but when you're getting to really high levels, you surviving is more important than that small life per second buff. Pants, dexterity, vitality, resist all, pretty much perfect as far as I'm concerned. Um, secondaries aren't too important on these. And your gloves, so um, survival and cooldown is available on your gloves, so you definitely want that. Attack speed's also available, one of the few spots it's available on your build, so try and get it here as well. So I think these are pretty ro well rolled with dexterity, vitality, attack speed and cooldown. And that rolls out your four pieces of inners that you'll be wearing. Um, moving on to supporting legendaries. So you're wearing Lyric's Crown. Um, you can see here I have gone for the life per second version here. I try and have it on a few pieces if I can, but you could easily have a life, a life percent roll here for great survivability or a resist all roll. So I've got Dexterity, Vitality, Regen, life per second. But yeah, as I say, you could have a resist all or a percent life roll there. Um, fine importantly with this it is doubling the effect of your gem that you have in there i recommend well you need to use a cooldown gem in there so you really want that legendary percent as high as possible okay your shoulders so these aren't perfect yet but considering my key stats of the build are cooldown and health globes this is primal and it has max cooldown and health lobes. So that's why I'm using it, despite the fact I have a useless stat on there. I would rather have them perfect and the, the orange stat perfect, being a primal, it's auto perfect um, and lose a stat. So that's what I've done here until I find a better pair. So dexterity, vitality, cooldown and health globe bonus essential. And your other stat, you could have some resistances, um, or some life percent would be a lot better than my missing stat there. Okay, boots. Really importantly, you're wearing illusory boots. So these come from Act 2 bounty caches. 
Um, yeah, quite important because you need to be able to move through things. You're standing in the middle of a lot of stuff. Um, one thing I will mention is when you're in that pack and you need to seek out your wizard, because you're wearing illusory boots, force move can be your friend to move to your wizard. So I use that a lot on my Zed Monk and I don't necessarily use it a lot on many other things. So on here, dexterity, vitality, or resistance, great. This is one spot where you don't really have a particularly usable force stat. So uh, regen life is, I think, great to have as a force stat. But importantly, it's another spot you can get your health globe bonus. So you need to have that health globe bonus on your secondary. So make sure you've got boots with your secondary health globe bonus for those. Your braces, so you, there, there is two pairs of braces for this build. One of them is strong arms, um, for fours at least. So on here, I've got intelligence. Getting a few pieces with intelligence is always a good thing if you play other classes. Um, but dexterity or intelligence means that vitality, resist all, and I personally love some life per second to get that little bit of extra buffs to my heels. Um, and obviously you want your orange stat on this as high as possible to give the max damage boost. The other pair of braces that you have, and in my case it is in my cube, um, is spirit guards. So on these you want similar stats that I have on my strong arms. You can see why I'm wearing the strong arms, they're much better statted than these spirit guards here. So dexterity or intelligence, vitality, regen life I recommend personally and some all resist or something like that and a high high secondary um jewelry so okay typically I recommend a hellfire amulet but let's face it all the hellfire amulets that I've got that are rolled correctly are non-ancient so I have ditched my hellfire amulet for a fire resist amulet just because I, I'm not happy with the health globe and cooldown of all my hellfire of the best hellfire amulets I've got since playing this which is a very long time so whereas this uh, star of Azkaranth here has perfect cooldown because it's primal and per perfect health globe bonus so that's why I'm wearing that but yeah my top recommendation is for a hellfire with a useful skill if you can get one with great cooldown and great health globe um, but at this stage of the game, yeah, I, I picked this instead. Uh, rings, you need to be wearing an Oculus ring. Both your rings, um, as well as obviously your amulet had health globe, your rings can also get health globe secondary, so you need it. Um, so for your, for, for both, well, for your Oculus ring, you definitely want cooldown on there, you definitely want health globe on there, and you want a orange stat as high as possible to give the best boost for your DPS. Your other stats are something to do with survivability. So again, some life, some vitality, those kinds of things. Uh, some attack speed, if you can get it, would be great. I haven't got it on this particular one because again, I'm prioritizing cooldown and health globe. Okay, your obsidian ring. Again, max health globe possible. It's really important, well, it's unavoidable with this you have to have one that drops with good health globe because you have to roll off the, one of the stats preferably in this build you roll off the critical hit chance for your socket so you need to find one that actually drops with health globe which makes it a little difficult and when you've got one with health globe bonus you do want one with as much as possible cooldown number one attack speed then number two you can see here i'm a percent off on cooldown but my cooldown everywhere else is pretty good so i'm fine on cooldown but yeah, health globe bonus, really important. Then cooldown, then attack speed as your stat priorities there. You'll keep the resource cost reduction and roll off the critical hit chance. Okay, I think that's the main gear pieces. The only other thing to note on the main armor pieces, as well as obviously the cooldown gem in the helm, is that I have the resist all gems in all the armor pieces. Now the weapons are a bit interesting because as I said earlier with the Rift Guardian, um, it's really important to avoid crowd control. Now, many weapons roll with a crowd control secondary. So, or particularly you're trying to avoid slows because that interferes um, with the Necromancer's ring, Christmas ring, and any hard CC. 
So the only CC you're really allowed to have, allowed, so you're allowed as a secondary, is chill. So if you get chill, that's okay. You're chilling everything anyway with your ice blink that you're wearing. I'll talk about legendary gems in a second. But if, you, if it's not chill and it's a CC stat on a secondary and a weapon, you shouldn't have it. So you need to find good weapons that have cooldown, number one, attack speed, I say number two on weapons, and vitality with no bad secondary. Um, so you can see in this case, you know, these are good secondaries. They're life after kill and level requirement reduced. No CC there. Same with my slanderer. It's got life after kill and monster kill gains experience. Great. And you can see they're both rolled attack speed, cooldown, and vitality. That's what you want. The gems in those, I personally use life per hit. Um, more survivability for you is great. So yeah, they're your weapons. Pretty straightforward. You can see on this, apart from this weapon I'm using right here, but for most of my pieces, I did have them with low augments. For example, these gloves have a rank 81 in them. I just want to say that while I do, this has intelligence even, <laughs> uh, there's one with vitality. While it's great if you have the gems to give yourself some extra vitality by throwing an augment in there, um, and vitality is what I recommend if you have the augments, they're really not necessary. So uh, the first gameplay video I showed, I was in a 135 Greater Rift in season, um, and I had no augments in this monk because I was augmenting three other characters. There's no gems for my monk. So it's really not necessary to augment, but if you have a ton of gems um, and you want to augment, augment with vitality, but really, really not necessary. As long as you're gearing correctly everywhere else, you should be able to survive. Fine. Okay, so that's gear, augments, and gems. Um, let's have a quick look at the cube. I do know that my cube won't show properly over there, so I just will show it here as well. So in the cube, you have flying dragon, which is a chance to double your attack speed. If you're doubling at your attack speed, you get more resource. So that's great. For your armor, I say I'm using the spirit guards in my cube. Um, depends what you have better out of spirit guards or the strong arm braces. Wear one, have the other in the cube. And finally, I'm using band of rechambers. So this gives me 50% more spirit for my spirit generators, which is my crippling wave. So again, I'm getting more resource, which allows me to, in this case, ban my mantra more. In potentially other cases with a different setup, it might be spamming my cyclone strike more. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'll quickly look at my Paragon. So my Paragon's pretty crazy right now in non-season. Last season, I was up at 2,500 Paragon. Um, important to note, in your Paragon, do not put any points when you're on any kind of support character, including the support monk that we're talking about now, do not put any points in area damage. You're not doing any damage, it's not required. Extra area damage in your game just makes extra calculations, which causes lag. So don't put any points into area damage. Do fill in everything in defense. Why not fill in everything in offense? You don't really need to, but why not? Um, and then in your core, you do want your maximum spirit because you want to be spamming stuff. You definitely want your movement speed unless you have some movement speed on your boots and you could reduce this a little. And then all the rest of your points should be going to vitality. That's what you need to fight. So yeah, all in vitality, the key things, everything in vitality, you know, nothing in dexterity, in core, and no points in area damage in utility. Okay, that's your paragon. So now we're gonna talk about the skills. So this is, um, my four-man setup is, I guess, important to say that now. Maybe I should have said it at the start. I'm talking about my four-man setup here. I'm going to show a couple of changes in, couple, in a couple other variations soon. Um, crippling Wave Tsunami. This is constant through everything. This is your main attack. It's generating your spirit. As I say, it is freezing every third hit. Um, which, oh, I didn't speak about my legendary gems. Is going to proc your ice blink. Quickly back to legendary gems before I keep going through skills. So, Ice Blink, if you're using that, 
your DPS, whomever they are, have an increased crit. So that's great. You're helping your party and it does some things like chill and slow. I personally wear Esoteric. I know a lot of people don't, but I've got enough cooldown from elsewhere, so Esoteric helps me survive. So that's great. I use Esoteric. I do recommend it. Some people will use Gogok of Swiftness, but as I say, as long as you've geared out with cooldown everywhere, you should be fine with cooldown. Um, and then Toxin. Toxin is another damage boost for your DPS. Gem of uh, Efficacious Toxin um, is the other one that's really required. If you don't have definitely the toxin in there and the ice blink in there people will wonder why you're a support monk they're your buffs for your group's damage okay back to skills so crippling wave is proccing your ice blinks so everything you hit has that increased chance to be critically hit so that's great cyclone strike is how you're pulling stuff you're trying to keep your mobs around your wizard so that your wizard can kill more stuff and implosion in this case gives you more pull on that so it's increasing distance to 34 yards important to note there are some other versions of the build um, where you will end up using soothing breeze but they are ones that use a different mantra um, because you need to when you're using soothing breeze you need to spam it but for the wizard that we're dealing with now you want to be running implosion and the mantra of healing okay in a sanctuary temple of protection so Inner Sank gives you a bunch of protection for all your allies. Um, Temple of Protection particularly makes them immune to control impairing effects. So as I say, when the barb's not right there, he's off pulling something, um, your allies still have Temple of Protection. Again, there are some other versions, particularly if I'm running, say, two man with a Crusader who doesn't need that uh, immune to control impairing effects, you could be running Safe Haven. So safe haven again is extra heals but you would only be running that if you're running with dps that don't actually need the crowd control epiphany soothing mist so this is a bunch of heals basically um whenever you got it on to everyone in a something yard radius around you and i say this is one of the things that is boosted by your health load bonus so within 30 yards so every ally within 30 yards is getting healing life per second from that. Blindly Fresh Crippling Light is about damage reduction. So when you hit that, enemies that are blinded do reduce damage. Um, and for five seconds after it wears off. And they also have a chance to miss with their attacks. So it's all about just reducing the incoming damage. Mantra of Healing Time of Need. So the, I guess, Everyone's getting within 60 yards the passive, which is life regen. This is increased by your life per second amount. Um, the other passive, which is to do with time and need specifically, is amount of healing reduces damage taken by 30% with below 50% life. I don't find that the most important part of it. It's there. The important part and why you're running this on your bar is because of that active, which is when you're pressing it, you've got this absorb shield that absorbs up to 62,000 plus 15 percent of your health load bonus so it gives everyone a nice shield um there which is great as i say it does need to be spammed though because that shield wears off when any you know when each person loses that or absorbs that damage so you do need to spam it um if you don't want to spam it and again with some other builds you'd be running mantra of salvation and then agility um, so agility is about increasing dodge. So again, it reduces the incoming damage because you're dodging more. Okay, so passives, what I'm running, let's say I don't have a Hellfire, so I only have four passive slots on this one. I do recommend near-death experience. Well, hopefully you won't use it often on the off chance you don't cyclone strike or crippling away something as you're moving or your epiphany isn't on cooldown because you're moving and they haven't Got enough cooldown near death experience is nice just make sure you don't die um resolve and beacon of atar are really important so resolve is reducing enemy damage um so everything i'm hitting has damage reduction from resolve so that's helping keep everyone alive beacon of atar reduces your cooldowns further so that's helping you keep that uptime on epiphany and sanctuary 
Now, when you're running Mantra of Healing, time of need, you need to spam it, so you need to run Chan of Resonance, which makes the, the cost of hitting that skill and activating it reduced by 50%. If you're not running that and you are running Agility, then you would use an Attack Speed passive in there. For example, CZ Initiative is generally the preferred one. The other option is Alacrity. Now, if I had a Hellfire, then the, the fifth passive I would want would be Unity. Generally, it just gives a bit of a damage boost to my DPS. Okay, so I think that's the main skills for Foreman um, that I run with and why I'm running them. Uh, what I do want to quickly look at now is, so that's my four-man build. I just want to quickly explain some of the changes to three-player um, and then two-player. So if I hit equip here on three-player, not a lot changed. <laughs> okay, so let's face it, not a lot changes with three-player. You can see my skills are the same um, and my gear the only thing that you really saw change, I think, was this weapon. This weapon, which is just a different version of the same thing. So, in three player, it's it's pretty much the same. You're using the same stuff. Um, you're using the same skills. The difference with three player is gameplay. So instead of, you know, I go to the spot and I sit there pulling with my sank down, and the barb brings me stuff, I'm having to help pull things a lot more. So I'm running around and trying to pull mods as I move um, and pull them to one spot. So that's I guess a big difference. Obviously the barb isn't around so the survival I provide is more important. Okay, let's go to two player now. So there's two player support specifically for that star packed wizard. There's I use a bunch of other two player uh, builds with other classes depending on what support they need. So if I've equipped that one, I've changed one other weapon and my braces. So let's have a look at that. So I've changed this weapon here. You can see here this weapon, it is a little better in terms of attack speed and cooldown um, and survivability in general. It's actually got the damage roll rolled off. The problem is it for, th for threes and fours is it's got that secondary chance to stun and hit. So that's not a problem for twos when I'm with the wizard. The wizard doesn't care if I stun stuff. So I've got the better weapon here that has what is considered a bad secondary for the necromancer. And then I've also changed the braces. So in two player, um, so my cube is the same. It's just double checking that. So, oops, wrong thing here. Um, I'm still using the spirit guards in the cube. The braces I swapped out where my strong arms are out and I put on a pair of NEMS. So there's no barb um, to run NEMS and we do want the elites in two player. So I put the Nemesis on. I've just double checked the skills. Skills are funnily enough pretty much all the same. So this is a pretty strong skill setup for supporting for supporting a star pact wizard, basically. <laughs> That's that's uh, what that is. Um, yeah, just very, very minor changes um, in gear, particularly for two player with A, putting on some Nemesis braces and losing the 30% buff from strong arms for two player and B, not caring about whether your weapons anymore have that CC secondary because the wizard isn't affected by it. So there you go. That is the 2.6.1 support monk from my perspective. Um, I hope you've learned something and I hope you've um, enjoyed watching. If I have missed something, I really hope I haven't. I've been talking for a long time, but if I have, drop me a message in the comments and I will try and respond. Thanks very much for watching. GG.